the first game in the losers round two of the 1v1 Ranger Cup tournament between Crime against Prime Bobby on the map Forts of Eisen is going to be Isengard versus Rohan. We are called to action, boys. Turn is Urupil opening and double farm opening, opening for Rohan. It's a good matchup. I like this matchup. I think it's, it's kind of difficult in the current meta for the Rohan faction. If you can't get a beautiful start off, your mid game will kind of fall off against Isengard. But remember, the patch 2.2 is still in development. We are trying to improve it. The more games we get to see, the more info we will get and we will collect. And with this info, we will try to make the game more enjoyable and also more balanced in the near future. The Uruks. Isengard is looking to find those peasants from the top side. And the Rohan player is sending one of the peasants to the bottom side and one of the peasants through the top side and he will recruit two more additional peasants and they will be sent through the middle. That's like the Rohan 101. The vision from Isengard, he's not able to see those peasants yet. He's looking for them, but they are hidden around this area. It's still CET, so that's the time, you know? In Germany, it's always CET. Doesn't matter if the time has changed, it always stays CET. So the Hobbit is doing a good job hitting, running, hitting, running, you know? Kiting. The Uruks need to give up on chasing. It will take you a lot of time to kill the Hobbit. In the meantime, this peasant in the middle will be caught by these two Uruks. Warchan is going to be used. And you don't stand a chance against the mighty Uruks. And one more peasant sneaking, but the Lambrimil worker is actually scouting this area. So a very good play there from Aizen, you know, to get a lot of vision. And he was able to find and see those peasants. That's going to, of course, increase his reaction time. Now he will know that they are coming from the bottom and he can be prepared for this. He was able to deal with this peasant, no problemo. Also, the second peasant will be caught and taken down. But he is sending the Uruks forward to this farm number one. Remember, in order to defend against the Uruk, one peasant is not going to be enough. You need at least two peasants, you need to always outnumber your opponent. Luckily, the peasants are cheaper compared to the Uruks, but obviously you need to invest 33 seconds or 27 seconds actually, because it's a level 2 building, to get them out on the field. But they are war chanted, they are actually hitting like an absolute track. In the meantime, Hobbit should be trying to kill some workers instead of try, you know, throwing rocks at the lumber mill. Oh, nice shot. Throwing the sword. Focusing down the lumber mill. But the Isengard player will be repairing this with the workers. That's a good move. In the meantime, he's attacking both the farms simultaneously from his opponent. That will make those Rohirrim extremely expensive. 540. And now, after this goes down, it will be even more expensive. It's going to cost around about 600. Oh my god. The repairing is coming in clutch, not many peasants remaining. The Hobbit should be discloaking and finishing. Oh, never mind, it didn't need, need. But he got discloaked anyway from destroying the lumber mill. And that's a, not a horrible start. But again, remember, he destroyed one mill but lost two farms in exchange. The Hobbit can't get cloaked anymore. Or can he? Nah, there is no shot. And they will bring the Hobbits to Isengard. In the meantime, the Rohirrim will be able to clean up those Uruks. And they will write down to clean up those Uruks too. And Isengard's eco not looking too hot. He has a Uruk with level 2. He has Warchant coming up very, very soon for the second time. And with the Warchant, he will use it on the four Uruks and creep now this layer and also this layer at the same time. Okay? So the Rohirrim are getting level 2. That's dope. Dope. I like it. Give those Uruks their pikes. Okay, Rohirrim are creeping. I like it. Um, creeping is very important to get to 3 power point power spike when you play Rohan. Which will be the Elvin special summon from the spellbook of Rohan. You know. Creep taken. It's going to be 2 creeps for Rohan and 2 creeps for Aize. And we have still 2 more creeps remaining on the field. After this 4 are gone. But remember, the pikemen are coming. Ooh, that will be actually disturbing. You should never go 50-50 with the pikemen, by the way. Never ever do this. 
always cheats on the Rohirrim. The only reason why you would go 50-50 is because when you know you can't win the fight. But in this situation, the pikeman will smoke this Rohirrim. Hold on. Oh, the pikeman got actually the last hit. And the money will also be taken by the Isengard player. It's good. He needs to get some pikeman upon the field very, very soon. Uruk Pit producing more and more pikemen. It will hit level 3 very, very soon. Industry is going to be quite helpful. I mean, maybe you can go for Sharku to counter the peasant spam. Or you can go for the Warp Pit. He has now full castle by now. And he was able to take 3 creeps. While Rohan was only able to take 2 creeps so far. But remember, he will take this one at the bottom side anyway. And after the first couple of minutes into the game, Prime Bobby, the Rohan player, has in total almost 2 power points collected. It means he still needs a whole power point to unlock his Alvin special summon from the spellbook. And Isengard has, you know, what it, what, what he needs, right? He needs industry. That's what's it's essential in the matchup between Aizen and a good faction. I mean, basically in every Isengard matchup, even against Mordor, it's very important to get to industry as soon as possible. What's up, Varon? To concept. Alcatraz. You in the door. Welcome, guys. Welcome to the stream. Get to work. New Libras, get to work. Okay, good map control for Rohan. Um, you know, be, until you get works, it's very hard for Aizen to contest the map control with Pikeman exclusively because Rohan has very cheap counters to that. But the second the works are joining the battlefield, it's going to be a different situation. He will go for the work riders now. Remember, he need to he need to pay the full price seven hundred because he has no discount as he has no slaughterhouses inside the base or outside the base. And Rohan will uh, slowly but surely end up losing the map control, right? That's why you need to be prepared for the late game situation. Late game situation means you need to go for the archer range, get fire arrows as soon as possible, and go for the Rohirrim archer army. It's a possibility, very good map control for Rohan. And you can also, like, people don't understand. Even if there is a pikeman defending a lumber mill, that doesn't mean that you can't destroy it. You, you are way more mobile than your opponent. Be careful here with the Rohirrim. Oh my god. He's paying attention. That's good. They have lot, lots of peasants. But again, very soon, they will not cause any more problems as the works are out. But he was able to destroy the work pit. That's actually big. And only one work was able to make it out. That's huge for Rohan. Because the one work rider can't be everywhere at the same time. You can't be middle, top, and bottom. So you can still keep spamming peasants. I mean, they were badly damaged, but even now, the amount of damage they are dealing to the pikemen is kind of nutty. Almost got level 2. And we have in total 3 power points now. Now we are talking, boys, okay? Now we are talking. Yes, the Alvin summon available. He went, Isengard went for Lourdes. Lourdes also not too bad to killing those uh, peasants, you know, from a long distance. Get some experience on Lourdes. Eventually ah, unlock his level 5. We must join with him, Gunther. We must join with Sam. Wise, my friend. No draft on those peasants. Yeah, that's the lower bracket round two. And after this one, we're gonna jump into the finals of the winner bracket right after the series. Hidden has been recruited. Um, did he buy the shields? Nope, he didn't. But Rohan doesn't really need these shields if you have Theorin around. He has 40 percent armor leadership, but you just need to avoid Lourdes. That's very important because he's only one level away from getting to level three, which will unlock his carnage. And with Carnage, you can just two-shot your Theorin. So he basically cripples you, runs you down, use, use Carnage, and then two-hit you. Heal won't change anything there. Draft. Heavy armor, kind of waste of money there. With heavy armor, you have still no chance against the War Riders. Okay, boys. Nice. He's preparing for the rush. And Eisner is kind of feeding Pikeman now, left and right. It's hard to watch over everything. Lourdes. Can be, can be, you know, kind of chased by the Uruk, uh, by the Prohirim, I mean. There are lots of pikemen in the base, three pikemen. He will produce even more and more and more. He knows what's about to come. He's also bringing those peasants to this location. Prohirim number three is coming. Uh, remember, he has Forge Bleeds and Heavy Armor too. But he's missing the shields, right? That's very important upgrade against arrow damage. Uruk is level three though. 6,500 HP. You need to be towering up in the front. There comes the Alvin special summon Lourdes is danger okay Lourdes is danger he has cripple you want to shoot down Lourdes with the elves before Lourdes is dead 
or far away, your Theoden can join. Now Theoden is exposed, right? And he will get... Boom. And Deja Wu. There comes the War Chant. Is he gonna draw the sword? He might pee with his life for this. There are too many Rohirrim warriors. Ooh, two shot. But he's very, very low now. Will he die? The Lurks. They are running him down. But too many pikemen. You see, that's how you can be prepared for the situation. It's like five battalions of pikemen. There comes the whole ability. And not whole ability. Warchan into the Palantir. But Rohirrim can turn and fight this. There is no need to be scared of this. Rohirrim have shields and also heavy armor. They are far stronger than Warchanted uh, War Riders. And the, 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 you know, the rush has been totally nullified by the existence of Lourdes. Lourdes, the one-man army he is, was able to take down the king. It's like when you play chess and you are able to checkmate your opponent. Even though you have no winning situation, but you find the one character, your queen, you know, can checkmate the enemy king. That's what happened here. In this case, Lourdes is the queen of the chess. And Isengard... Taking some map back. Luckily, uh, Theodem was only level 1. So, reviving him will take you 1 minute and 15 seconds and only 600. Archer range is building up. But those mistakes will cost Rohan a lot of momentum. Rohan is a faction that is based on momentum, right? That's what he Rohan heavily needs. You need the lead to snowball your lead because your lead game is super strong, yes, but it's also very expensive. All this, all this stuff you need to get done costs you so much resources, you know? Again, fire arrow, Rohirrim Archer, give them banner, heavy armor, plus fire arrows. It will be so expensive. But he still gets some peasants on the field. I like that one, actually. Nice. Ooh. Getting power points. Also against Ro Aizen, you can go land, which is not bad when you play Rohan against Aizen as Rohan. What's up, little Spartan? Welcome to the stream. Yeah, I mean, Theodin dies. Anybody dies there. Uh, Theodin is not a tank hero. And Lords of Carnage gets 200% um, 100 damage boost, you know? It's kind of scary when you think about this. And also, he's getting increased attack speed. So, he will hit very, very hard and very, very fast. But Rohan is still holding. Legolas has been recruited. I like that one, actually. Legolas is also one of the lead game monsters. You can invest early to become super strong in the lead game. He's a hero killer himself. And here, one of the situations you need to understand, if Legolas is level 5, you know, that's the, like, 4, 5, but 5 is, like, the ideal number, and Lourdes cripples him, and then Lourdes cripples him from a far distance, right? And he needs to draw the sword and walk to Legolas. When Legolas is level 5, he will kill him before Lourdes can make it to him. With Hawk Strike plus Shot all the time, you know? But you need to be careful with level 1 though. Level 1, Lego will die in a second against Lourdes. What's up, Torin? Welcome. Torin, pretty much deja vu situation. But here, there is no backup now for Lourdes. Kill him. Heal. Heal will be used. Oh, but this is gonna be his death. Kill him. Oh my god, he's bringing the pikeman too. Legolas, bring Legolas. Legolas is moving. Ooh, one more hit. One more hit. Don't let him escape. Run him down with the pikeman. With the Rohirrim. Oh my god. He's escaping with one HP. Zero HP actually. Legolas level almost three. That's so unfortunate that Lourdes was able to survive this. Look his HP boys. Look his HP. Do you see this? It looks like he has 0 0.00 HP. You know? 0 0.001 actually. They were as level almost 3 though. But Rohan is losing map to Vorks and Pikeman combination. A Vork pit is going to be rebuilt. I believe this Isengard went for the upgrades. Yes, sir. These are Orokai. Their armor is thick and their shields broad. That's true, my friend. Their armor is thick and their shields broad. Industry has been reused. And he has also power points for the Freezing Rain, right? And losing map, Rohan, that's not a good sign. You need map, like mentioned before. There is so much stuff you need to get done. Pyro, uh, Aragorn, you need to revive your Theorin for a second time into the game. But Legolas will become stronger. And his train archers also works on the Rohirrim archers, so you can give them free experience over and over again. 
Prohir Marcha, one of the greatest units against uh, for the map control, right? It kind of can. It has no real counter, which is immo which is mobile. Only combos can counter or ro archers can counter this, but they are not as fast as Rohiri Marchers. And it basically counters both the Vorks and also the Pikemen from Eisen. That's what we want through that. King is back on the menu, boys. There comes the Alvin summon for the second time, this time for the map control. And Rohan is reclaiming some map, but of course that gives Eisen a lot of time, right? He has an industry on a level 3. Scrazzy with the primers for the first time. Thank you so much, Scrazzy, for the huge support to the channel and welcome. Subscribed. Welcome to be on Standards Crew. Thank you so much for the huge support. Killing workers, innocent workers, you know. Uh, Isengard is not spamming too many pikemen. Lourdes is uh, the most cost efficient hero. We already made him more expensive. He used to cost 1200, now he costs 1400. So he costs more than 10% more. Bro, here, ready, but yeah. Isengard needs him, right? That's why. He's only strong after level 3, though. But I mean, it's the best hero in the game, right? Loki, that's. I think nobody will argue against that. He's the best hero. In every aspect, he gives you literally everything you want. Damage leadership, damage leadership, cripple, carnage, shoot, and with sword. Lego has to move a bit. Oh, be careful here. They are quite tanky with fire arrows, as you can see and tell. Uh, when they are not, when they are using the porcupine formation, they will become even more tanky. Terry was able to get experience from killing those pikemen level two unlocked. That's beautiful. So the power spike we are looking for for Aizen is at this point of the time, of course, Saruman. So now Aizen army is already pretty solid and strong. These three combos with Warchant and Lure's leadership combined have like a very good all-out potential. That's their strength. And they are lacking the armor leadership, which is permanent, unlike Warchant. So Saruman and then this army is good to go, right? I like these two pikemen separated. This combo is just much more reliable. The Uruk crossbowman combo. Because they are tankier. The front line is tanky against fire arrows. Oh, Legolas. Oh, the chunk. Oh, my. Oh, my God. The chunk here was coming in clutch, but super late. And Lego, the prince of the Mirpur house, has been taken down. Level 5 Warrior here in Warriors. But that's a good move from Aizen. Again, you need to invest 1600 to revive the prince of the Mirpur house. You know? That's a lot of money. And again, he's level 3 only. But I would revive him low-key. You know, basically Lego is pretty good against combos too. You can move on, use Hawk Strike and back off. And do this on repeat. Legolas is in the graveyard. Are I mean, this is not going to create a lot of pressure on Rohan. What you want to do is get this one at the bottom. There is no curse in Elvish, Entish... Or the tongues of men for this treachery. treachery. You want to get this outpost and siege them, right? You want to bring the war to them when you play Eisen against good faction. That's what you want to do. You don't want to just wait for your opponent to attack you. And that will cause you to lose map control over and over again. It will kind of force you into a camp to play style. You want to bring the fight to them. Now you have, you have spiked, right? With your army, with lords. With, you have rain from your spellbook too. What are you waiting for, you know? Oh my god, these players are very talented, you know, we have Necromancer against uh, Tristan here in this game. And they are so good that they can even type Elrond while they are playing Morgoth, in the chat. A demon of the ancient world. Demon of the ancient world. I mean, this is a very slow army. So seeing this, Rohan should ultimately focus down the castle, which is super open. All you can enter Buffy, you know, you can just get there and farm power points. Theorin is trampling the non-porcupine formation pikemen and gets a lot of experience from this. Level 4 is the spike we are looking for. 
So if Eoma in Turing is level 4, that's gonna make Rohan super super strong. The Glorious Charge plus the leadership from Eoma will not make your Orohirim Arts only quite tanky, but also they will hit like a truck. More Rohirim Archer. I would go for Legolas Revival to be honest with you. And this army should rotate to the main castle, which is super open. There is only one pikeman. This pikeman is not going to be enough to protect. Whenever you see your opponent exposed like this, and he's moving with lords and like huge army, in randomly in the middle of the map for no reason, right? There is no reason for Isengard to be there where he is. Then his base is open. Attack him. Just attack him. He's going for it. I like it. Now seeing this, Eisen has to rotate back to the castle, which means Rohan can leave and take down the outpost, right? That's what you can do. Outpost also exposed. No defense at all. Demolish the towers in time. That's very important. Glückstrache with the first time subbing with the tier 1 to the channel. Really means a lot, my friend. Welcome to the stream. And thank you very much for the huge spot. Glückstrache just subscribed. Welcome to be on Standard's crew. Level 3 furnaces, that's gonna be a big ouchie. There comes Lurtz. Oh, he's gonna look to cripple. Move if you're tuning! Oh, you shall not move, bro. Abandon the king, man. Abandon, just let him be. Oh my god, it's gonna be... Poor Theorin. Theorin king stands alone. <laughs> ah. And just go now to the outpost. I like the sneak attack with the ram, though. But I don't think it's gonna be too... I mean, there is a Rohirrim, right? And the Rohirrim should be able to take down the ram before it can deal damage to the wall. But for whatever reason, Isengard kind of managed to take more than 50% of the map. That's kind of impressing. impressive. Three combos, Lourdes, no Saruman. How much does... Nah, he doesn't have that much money. But he has already collected 8 power points on top of the Freezing Rain he has. And Rohan has only 5 power points. So Aizen is super ahead in the power point department. Like super ahead. The only thing I can see can happen is when Rohan gets 6 power points with the ends. Because there is no Saruman who, who potentially can steal your ends from the summon. You basically summon the ends on top of this army and then you trample them. And it can make, maybe get you lots of power points. The Alvin summon against the Battering Ram, not the greatest idea of all time. The Rohirrim will be barely able to survive and the Ram will make it actually to the castle. There is Legolas back on the field. Legolas should be able to finish it. Boom. Nah, actually not. Quite tanky. Also, Hobbit has been taken down. He's attacking the Ram, but the Ram has crazy resistances against arrows. Super, super tanky. And, oh my god, that's gonna be Fiesta. He will be able to break in, by the way. He will be able to break in. Rohirrim and Eoma are here. Theodin is gonna get revived very, very soon. But he was level 3. That means, um, again, one and a half minutes, nearly. The part of the wall has been broken. But Rohan has now 6 power points in the bank. So he might actually kind of defend this. Like, that's the perfect situation. Look how clumped they are. If you summon the ends right now on their face, it would be kind of crazy, you know? Or when you, but you need to do this before they can in get in there. You know, you want to do this now before you get before he gets in. Okay, there comes the end summon into the X button. Ooh, Legolas has been crippled. His end has to run into the space here. It's very important. Rohirrim are coming. Eoma got level three. Ooh, what a he break the part of the wall, but then the army got kind of CC there, crowd controlled. The ends are going to war. Power points are rising, also for Aizen potentially. 11 power points, almost Balrog actually. Lord's getting bullied by the end a little bit. And is raging, super, super angry when he is on fire. Um, and Theorin is back. Maybe he can get GC here actually with the Theorin. He was able to save the level 5 Rohirrim too. Now this guy is Speedy Gonzalez. And that's a big W right there for Rohan. I like this. Now, out of this fight, you need to create yourself a bit momentum. Um, like, un unfortunately for him, his heroes couldn't get too much experience from this fight. And he's feeding lots of power points also in return. And Aizen took the whole map, right? Look, um, take a look into the minimap, boys. What a great defense, just like in the films. Whenever you are struggling, call on the big boys. In this case, the big boys are the Ant Warriors. Thank you very much, Glückstrache. It really means a lot, my friends. And glad to see you around in the chat, too. Thank you. Almost 13 power points for Aizen. 
three power points so they are actually both around about seven power points away from getting to the balrog slash aod but remember the evil get the power points in a normal case a bit faster than good so if you need the same amount of power points it means evil is ahead even if not much but he's still ahead and very close to level four irma and also very close to level four theorin map has to be retaken in the super late game uh, in any map really especially on forts of eisen outpost control is essential so you want to control the outpost as good against evil if you don't do this if you can't do this balrog is going to be the finisher he can finish your castle so for that reason you need map control and you need also outpost control very important aragorn has been recruited too he has no anduril sword super sloppy without anduril super weak without anduril Okay, now we have Saruman on the field for the first time into this game. Also, Lourdes was able to survive that. He has Pillage, which means he will print money for each kill. And he's now making an army worthy of Mordor in the castle. But he will feed now with the Spikeman. You need to back off a little bit. And this Rohirrim will die there, by the way. But he never switching to the Porcupine formation for whatever reason. However, they have Forge Bleeds and Heavy Armor. We have no chance. Aragorn needs to come closer. And by the way, also during the battle, he never used the Freezing Rain, so he was holding on it. But Rohan took, out, took over the map though. Rohan took the entire map, level almost 5 Legolas, you like to see that. Can Gimli with Slayer outrun Cavalry? Not yet, but in the update, in the next update he might actually. <laughs> you know, in the next update he might. Even if you outrun the cavalry, the way Gimli is working is he can hit once and he needs to wait for the next auto attack, which will always create a distance between Gimli and the horses you want to chase, you know? So he can't perma hit you. He hit, wait, hit, wait. And when he's hitting, then he waits and you can keep running in the meantime, you know what I mean? Five power points against 14. The first game, I mean, that's going to be a great series. I can already see that coming, you know? Saruman has to be careful, though. There is too much firepower. Rohirrim Archer, Legolas level 5 almost. Elma Spear, they will hard focus down Saruman. Saruman, super strong hero, yes. But not very tanky hero. And Rohan took the whole map. Warwick without upgrades. Isengard is not very rich, as you can see and tell. Kind of poor. That's feeding right there, you know. What's up, Major of X? Welcome. Hey, Ellen, you're hitting like a truck today, Shanks. <laughs> thank you, mate. Thank you, thank you. I don't know, man. I see Tristan, I see Necro, and I see Ellen in the chat. Who, these, who are these people then? I'm wondering. Okay. Aragorn, so slow, you know. Till under his sword. The works are inting a little bit. 15 power points against 5. Ends are recharging though. So if Rohan can stall it until the next end summon. And then go all in. I think he can you know, use all of his power points. And his heroes who are all about to hit level 4. To get the missing power points to unlock the EOD right. Oof but Isengard is rotating boys. Where is the Alvin summon? Here in the area to finish off the war rider. Okay. Eisen is rotating. You can't defend this. Now you need to play dance around the Rosie. You see Isengard coming. I, I think you should not commit to this fight. You will lose this fight. So you basically go to his castle and farm power points. Eisen is incredibly strong with Lord Leadership and Saruman in those all-out fights. Now these three combos with Warchant and this double hero. Oof, deleted, deleted. That's gonna feed power points, boy. Mary, no. Lourdes, kill Lourdes. I like this land though. I like this land. He's, he needs to cover this. What is Saruman doing there? No! Oh no, don't, don't run him down. Kill Theorin. Oh my god, he's crippling him. Okay, nice. Fiesta. Literal Fiesta. Theorin is going to get crippled for the third time. <laughs> Where is Eowyn? Eowyn, you can finish e this dude with... Sp sp smite him. Eowyn. Scream, I am no man and smite him he was barely able to survive he never demolished structures too 
That's why he was able to get so many power points. And remember, Rohan went for the Alvin Wood. That's why he is now two power points behind. Does he have shields now, finally? No, he didn't. He didn't buy shields at all. Which is a big mistake. Now it's everything level 3, right? And they are, look at them shooting. Bam, 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 bam. Towers plus furnaces. It's so much damage. That's why you... Oh my god, he's... Oh my... Oh my god. Oh my god. Don't do this now to yourself, bro. Run! Don't do this to yourself. Look at the power points from Aizen. Don't do this to yourself. And he's coming. The, there are two bro broken parts of the wall, by the way. Rohan can repair only one of them. But remember, he has the end summon like in the previous situation. Uh, the speechcraft and uh, the bomb tongue is available for Sariman. Kill is available for Rohan. Hyodin has been killed. And unlucky, but he was never level 4. He's going for the Gimli. What you can should be doing is cancel Gimli now, get the money for Gimli, and repair both parts of the wall. He's gonna summon the ends right there. Right there. Summon him. Ooh, what is this? So close. Oh my god. Saruman. This guy's so lucky with the heroes, bro. All of them are able to survive with 1 HP. Legolas, go out. Kill. Hit 1 hit, 1 hit, 1 hit, 1 hit, 1 hit. Oh, he finished them. Nice. Legolas, the hero, killer, hero, hero slayer. That's good. Six power points. Versus 21, though. He is the Balrog. And he's gonna choose him, too. Oh my god. Aragorn. He's struggling killing those pikemen in the porcupine formation because... Ooh, the demon of the ancient world. He went for the Anduri Sword, too, from the spell book. That's why he needs another five power points. Now with the monster trio, one of them is going to be taken down. Heal is coming in again super duper late. And also this combo, this Pikeman level 5 combo is kind of demolishing the Gimli. Help me all you want, Gimli. Where is Legolas? He's dead. Balrog is going to fly in. He wasted a lot of time actually here. Outpost control from Rohan. I'm going to finally get level 4. That's good. Uh, but the Sita will be getting one shot here, two shot it. Rohan Sita is a bit more tanky compared to the Rohan Sita. Darkness, Darkness is closing in on me. Don't lose your Lego uh, Elma like this. Did Aragorn die? No. But this army is still not to be underestimated, right? That's what you want to keep in mind. Level 5, safety level 5. Oof, the, sh the damage. Warchamp plus Lourdes leadership. Lourdes is still alive. The yeah, Elendil won't affect the level 6, level 3 units. Ah, you can't... Oh my god. This game should have been, could have been definitely won by Rohan. I think too many mistakes in the lead game. He was leading though. The last desperate charge of the Rohirrim. Emma, the new king of Rohan. Can he turn? No, he can't. Can he? Can he? No, he can't. Can he? No. He can't. What is Lourdes actually? Did Lourdes die? I'm not sure. And this Rohirrim Archer Trample damage is not the greatest, I'm being honest with you. <laughs> if you had this two normal Rohirrim with this level 5, or offensive GG strategy, I like it. I like the offensive GG strategy. And this Smiley too. I mean, this is, I don't know if this is friendly or passive aggressive, you know, can tell. And the full focus on the outpost. GG well played indeed. The first game goes to Crime, the Isengard player against Rohan, and he will get one step closer to continue his journey in the in the tournament. Let's take a look into the end game statistics. Yeah, the money differential was not that big because Rohan was having map control for a very long time. Six thousand between evil and good, especially when it's Rohan, it's kind of good for the good faction. He killed also a bunch of units, but the decision making in the lead game kind of cost him the game. Anyways. Maybe he can win the game the next time.